present day, downtown Saskatoon, 3 a.m. on a Sunday morning. We open to a plain apartment containing very little furniture. Scattered across the apartment are items of clothing. Standing alone by the front door is a 25-year-old man wearing only his underwear. His hair is greasy and messy. This is Cold Pizza Slice, or CPS for short. We witness him closing the door. Fuck. 3 a.m. on a Sunday and I'm alone again. (laughs) Then, one by one, he picks up each item of clothing and redresses himself. Slowly, he situates himself. I've always been a hopeless romantic. From the day I was born, I always had some sort of hope that someone special would be waiting for me. Maybe that's still the case. I really couldn't say. I just haven't met the one yet. (sighs) The problem lies with my homosexuality. Or as a few guys who I went to high school with would probably say, the fact that I like to suck a good cock. (laughs) The gay dating pool is incredibly small. When it comes to being gay, there seems to be only three ways you can end up dating. Number one, you go to the gay club every night and you fuck your way around the after hour gay scene until you find someone who is desperate enough to date your sorry gay ass. Number two, grinder, which um, for those of you who don't know is um, it's, it's sort of like an iPhone version of Christian Mingle but for sinners. Or number three, when the blonde from yoga sets me up on a blind date with her gay best friend, she knows this one will work out because we're both gay and sassy. So (laughs) in the past year, since I broke up with my ex-boyfriend, I've gone on like what, a hundred and eight blind dates. set up by numerous friends. These dates, they're all the same. Kind of cute guys who are never really my type. The guy and I meet up at some overpriced hipster restaurant that plays its music way too loud. Then afterwards, we walk around for a bit. We end up in my apartment. We fuck. And he says he'll call me. And of course he doesn't, and unless he wants to fuck again, and well, Who am I to say no to mediocre sex? (laughs) So that's been my life in the past year. Perpetually single. The first date, the first fuck, the 2 a.m. you up text message, second fuck. (laughs) Then we never talk again. It's all so stupid. I go on these dates knowing that they're just this segue to sex. These guys ask me where I grew up or what my favorite book is, like they care. My problem is that I just wanna go on a date with someone who's on that date because they're interested in me. Not just because they're also gay and single and Definitely not because they're only interested in what the inside of my mouth feels like. (laughs) And maybe I'm asking too much. Maybe if I go on enough of these shitty fuck dates, then I will find Mr. Right and and will go off and adopt gay babies and do musical theater. (laughs) I just feel like I've tried to find love everywhere, but... It doesn't want to find me. Here's the part of the story that you've been waiting for. There was one place where I hadn't tried to find love and that was on a dating site. 
there's those actual dating sites, which are uh, typically for uh, sad old straight people who are too socially awkward to find love, the conventional straight way, aka in a bar. Um, and then there are the dating apps targeted at the urban 20 something year old, such as myself. These apps are almost always used for a quick and easy fuck. Anyone who thinks otherwise is kidding themselves. Why else would these apps give their selection based on user proximity? <laughs> the straights and the less adventurous queers use Tinder. The other gays use, uh, well, a lot of different apps. Uh, there's Squirt, Surge, Jacked, Scruff, Growler, Man Jam, Guy Spy, Planet Romeo, Daddy Hunt, Man Hunt, Hole, Pokemon Go. <laughs> Just to name a few. But the most important one, Grinder. It's so popular, I even know a few straight guys who use it to network. <laughs> but despite my objections about using such hookup apps, I too ended up falling down the rabbit hole that is Grinder. Which takes me back to last night. It's a Friday evening. I am being a, a sad old man re-watching the criminally underrated TV show, Freaks and Geeks, for the 26th time when my phone buzzes. I check my phone, and it's a text message from this guy. Let's call him Fuckboy. Him and I went on an awkward date a little less than a year ago. Then we fucked periodically for a few months. <laughs> Not gonna lie, pretty amazing sex. Then maybe about six months ago, he fell off the face of the earth. Never heard from again until last night. Let's see what kind of riveting things he has to say. The lights shift to last night. CPS has a faint blue glow on his face from the TV. Then Fuckboy enters. We hear the sound of a text notification. Hey. What's up, winky face? Holy fuck. What in the absolute fuckery is this? Seriously? He messages me after months of ghosting me. I shouldn't reply. No oh, fuck it. <laughs> Not much. Um, lying around naked. Haha. <laughs> Soap. He doesn't need to know. Good. Just bored. Dot dot dot. Are you doing anything special tonight? Hmm. Not really. Maybe just some. Netflix in bed. Bed? Winky face. Yeah, I'm just lounging around, trying to relax. Want company? We could relax together. Fuck, I'm bored of this. I'm not gonna reply. Hey. Hey. Hi. What's up? Hey! Yeah, a fuck boy over here sends me six text messages before giving up. Look at him, buddy. CPS shoes fuck boy off the stage. You see, this sort of shit keeps on happening. Gay men not wanting to put in the work of a relationship. They just want sex. 
And these random text messages from Fuckboy were really the tipping point. I decided somewhere between messages five and six that I need to take my love life into my own hands. And the easiest way to do so, in my opinion, is Grinder. What a way to spend my Friday evening watching 90s sitcoms and cruising on Grinder. <laughs> so, next thing you know, I opened up the App Store and I searched GRINDR Grinder. Download. Downloading. Da downloading. Downloaded. Create an account. Am I a robot? <laughs> sure, fucking hope not. <laughs> Accept terms and conditions, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Display. <laughs> Cold pizza slice. <laughs> Headline. Always looking for the one. Age, 25, show age, yes, why wouldn't I? My grinder tribes. What the hell is that? Weight, six feet. Height, six feet. Weight, none of your damn business. <laughs> Ethnicity, when the fuck is that important? Relationship status. Single as fuck. <laughs> Set profile photo. About me. Pizza. Wine and anal. Avid Golden Girls fan. Insert cliche here. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Done. The lights shift to noon light flooding through the blinds. All of a sudden, I wake up to the sound of my phone's alarm going off. Shit. Noon already? <laughs> Fuck. What the fuck? 14 messages. <laughs> Let's see. Horny Top says, Got any nudes? 420 Friendly says, You like older men? Exclamation mark. Question mark. Exclamation mark. Hung says, Ah! Fresh meat! Holy shit. Just flat out sent a photo of his junk. Nope. Delete. Delete? Wait. Got a message from a guy named Evan. His photo of him is interesting. His pants are uh, a bit too big, his hoodie a bit too small to have feminine looking. Cute. His about me says, ask me to find out. Let's see what he has to say. Hi. Hey. Um, sorry for the late reply, LOL. <laughs> Lol, don't sweat it. So what's up? Not a whole lot. Thinking about what I want to make myself for lunch and stuff. Yeah. I just woke up, LOL. <laughs> At noon? Aren't you like 25? Hey, it's Saturday, and I only work part-time, so... Nah, I'm only playing with you. So, 
you knew to grind it? How'd you guess? IDK. I'm kind of psychic. It's like I had ESPN or something. <laughs> LOL. Mean Girls? And there's a 30% chance that it's already raining. I'm sick. Boo, you whore. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> I haven't seen it in forever. It's a good movie. Up there with Casablanca. And the hit 1988 movie, Twins, starring <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. Oh my God, who could forget that cinematic masterpiece? LOL. <laughs> so, what brings you here? Uh, I don't know. Chat and dates, hoping to meet new friends, learn more about people, stuff like that. Cool. Got a name? Copy to slice. No spaces. You can just call me uh, CPS. <laughs> I'm guessing you're having. Damn. The ESPN is strong in this one. Oh, you know, total psychic. LOL. <laughs> so, what brings you here? <laughs> Trying to find love or something like that. JK. <laughs> Cute. LOL. <laughs> I just have to let you know that I'm bad at this whole instant messaging thing. I'm much more awesome in person. Oh, yeah? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I have a huge Hot Wheel collection, and sometimes my mom buys me the name brand Fruit Loops. I live a pretty dope life. Yeah, boy. How many Hot Wheels? Like a lot. Almost 10. <laughs> I think you're, you're really funny. My therapist says that I use humor to mask my childhood trauma. LOL. Uh, shit. Let me take you out for coffee or something? Honestly, not much of a coffee fan. How could you not like coffee? Exclamation mark, question mark. I live on coffee. No joke. I once did the calculation and I spend, on average, 2300 bucks a year on cold milk. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. LOL. But I mean, everyone has a vice. Something to keep them happy in this time of crazy goings on in the world. Oh, trust me. Last month, I watched all nine seasons of The Office. Okay, that's not too bad. In five days. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> LOL. Ah. Uh... So, how about dinner instead of coffee? I'd like that. I've been meaning to try that new taco place, the one on fourth. Would tonight work? Want to meet at six? Sounds like a plan. CPS exits the stage, leaving Evan all alone. My name is Evan. I'm a 20 year old queer boy and I would describe myself as aggressively average, which I'm 100% okay with. I don't have a huge porn star penis or clothes somewhere fancy like The Gap. I was never the smartest kid in school and I was far from good at sports. <laughs> and like, don't even ask me to sing outside of the shower. And I'm cool with that. Because I know when I can look at the mirror and I can know who's looking back at me. Which now that I said it, sounds like the geekiest shit I could have ever think of. I've been on Grinder for the last four years. And like, it's not like I'm here just desperately looking for love. Grindr is an interesting way to kill time. To just chat with random gay boys. 
sometimes I get response and sometimes I don't. I just scroll through Grinder because I want to connect with other gays. And maybe in the long run, I'll find love. But it's not a priority of mine. Sex isn't really a priority of mine either. Like, don't get me wrong, I like sex. I've had sex, but it leaves me feeling yucky afterwards. I figured out that I'm not a hookup kind of guy and no shade towards people who love hooking up, just it ain't for me. I'm not the kind of guy or person who's gonna get on my knees just to make a man feel taller or better. I don't exist to pleasure other men and those men don't exist to pleasure me. And like, uh, I'm not blind or naive. I know I'm using a geosocial app uh, created as a way for gay guys to get off. I know that most of the men on Grindr are simply looking for random, no strings sex. A good majority of messages are from headless torsos who are only looking for fun. And FYI, sympathy is not what I'm asking for. I know what I signed up for. The thing is, is that Grindr is like the only place I can be gay in this small, conservative, lonely city. Well, other than the gay bar, but that's really not my scene. And so, yeah, a city of 300,000 people. And this app feels like the best way to connect with gay men around me. I've had some pretty amazing conversations with some guys and been ignored by others. And, but after years on Grindr, I pretty much know every guy who frequents the app. And so that's why I get excited every time I see a new person. It's just a chance to make a new friend. Which brings me to cold pizza slice. Mr. Looking for love in all the wrong places. That name, <laughs> that bio that horribly lit selfie. There's a lot to unpack here. So of course I had to message him. Next thing you know, we're back at his apartment after having supper together. Later that evening, the lights change and we are back in CPS's apartment after dinner. Evan and CPS are just entering. I just don't think that Peter is gonna change my opinion about the Canada Goose jacket. I'm not saying that you should trust Peter per se, like, they do have their own hang-ups. Yeah, they wouldn't know a strong fashion statement if it hit them over the head with a club. <laughs> Are you making a clubbing baby seals joke? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to take your hoodie? Uh, no, it's fine. I'm usually cold anyways. Oh, do you want me to t turn out the heat? No, oh, no, 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 it's fine. Uh, I like your place. <laughs> Did you enjoy dinner? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was great. It was delicious. But I mean, if I'm spending 20 bucks on a salad, it better be, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you could go to a fancy taco place and order a salad. This is the guy who can function without coffee. I know. I'm the uh, anomaly, but the millennial who doesn't need coffee to survive. I might as well be a mutant. I once did the calculation and it turns out I spend an on average 2300 bucks a year on Starbucks. You already made that joke. Yeah, joke. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have a weird question. That's good. Why did you sign up for Grindr? Like, a hundred percent honest answer. Why did you download it in the first place? I don't know. I'd never really used it before and wanted to see what I could find. Yeah. Don't you ever get tired of the same old shit? Like, I want a connection that I've earned. I want feeling, I want a real person and, and not just this fleeting memory. 
Cake culture can be so toxic. And I don't want to be toxic. I just want to be this beautiful person in a world full of beautiful people. <laughs> yeah. That's rad. It sounds so stupid when I put it like that. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. Oh, well, thank you. So, uh, have you ever been in a serious relationship? Once. What happened? If you don't mind me prying. No, no, pry away. Um, I have no idea. It was going really good. Um, like beyond good, actually. He was four years older than me, mature, amazing. He loved me and I loved him. We were together for two years and then suddenly bam, I was dumped. I'm sorry. That's shitty. I'm over it. What about you? Have you ever been in a relationship? <laughs> Not really. I mean, I've come close, but it never really works out. I find that most of the men I meet have like this disconnect from who they are in Grindr and who they are in real life. Like, they can only be gay on the internet. Like, the only thing they can be proud of is this synthetic manufactured cyber cell. Yeah. Not to get all profound or anything. No, no, it, it, I totally understand what you mean. It, it's like, I feel bad for some of them. Stuck in, in this place where, where the only part of themselves that they ever let experience love or, or sex is trapped within this five inch screen. Yeah, like that's no life I want to live. So why would I fall in love with someone living that life? If that makes sense. Makes total sense. I guess. Maybe I haven't yet met the one. I mean, like the one who wants to live their life the way I do. That's awesome. Do you want to watch something? Sure. CPS grabs the TV remote and turns it on. Evan sits on the complete opposite side of the couch. They look at each other and smile. Evan scoots over towards CPS. Then CPS does the same. Then Evan scoots over more so their legs and arms are touching. They look at each other again. Evan lets out a big smile. Evan puts his arm around CPS. CPS nuzzles in closer. He leans in and kisses Evan on the cheek. Evan kisses CPS on the forehead. CPS leans up and starts kissing Evan on his lips. Evan joins in. CPS gets on top of Evan's lap and straddles up, kissing his neck and rubbing his body. <laughs> CPS takes off his own shirt and in that moment time freezes for CPS Evan addresses the audience everything was so good the blue glow light from the TV on his face him nuzzling into me his lips on mine my hands firmly planted on his back it made me feel alive warm and kissing my neck it felt so right then it felt so wrong i felt myself transcending into this hazy yet familiar one night stand territory and as good as this feels in the moment i know in the long run this isn't i want to be more than a one night stand time resumes Can you, can you stop? I don't think I want to do this anymore. It's okay. It's okay. Please? What? I 
said stop. Why? What's wrong? Hey, hey, what's what's wrong? Are you stupid or something? Do you not know the meaning of no? I was trying to make you comfortable. <sighs> You want to know what would make me feel comfortable? If you would have stopped when I asked you to. What am I to you? Just another hole to try? Today's special flavor? Evan, I'm sorry, I didn't mean... I'm tired of explaining myself to people. It's bad enough having to deal with this shit from straight people. You know what? You're just another gay guy who takes what he wants. Evan, I'm... I'm out of here. Evan, I... Evan! I'm... St I fucked up! Fuck. Not knowing... Not thinking, I, I texted fuckboy, who an hour later showed up at my front door. Hi. Cold Pizza Slice reaches out his hand and uses it to guide fuckboy into the apartment. CPS starts kissing him while removing his jacket. CPS abruptly stops and asks. This is what you wanted, right? Several hours later, CPS is sitting alone in the living room with Fuckboy sleeping in the bed. I open up Grindr so I can apologize to Evan. But then I can't find his account. He blocked me. Do you ever feel like a horrible person? Every day. I made a mistake. I went too far with someone. And I don't know what to, I don't know how to make it better. Sometimes, man. The only thing you can do is admit that you did something wrong and vow to never make the same mistake again. Yeah. What'd you do, if you don't mind me asking? I just... I went on a date with this guy and... And afterwards, I started kissing and, and he said, stop. And, and I said, you're just nervous, something like that. Never thought about it, how selfish I can be fucking pushy I can be like but like my wants and needs just trump all this guy didn't want it 
And I treated him like, like I didn't care. When I was young and new and nervous, I had all these men like use me, coerce me. They they made me feel special and, and sexy just so that they could get off. And I thought, well, that's that's just the way it is. And then and then I continued that absurdly fucked up cycle of abuse. I'm just a piece of shit. You're not. Like I said, now you know. Do better. Be better. Nothing wrong with admitting you did something wrong. Thanks. You know, you talk a lot. I've been told. <laughs> You're cute when you smile. Maybe we should head back to bed. Actually, I, I think I'm gonna head out. You don't have to go. Oh, I have stuff to do. Oh, well, you could stay over. I'll make breakfast, my specialty, uh, frosted flakes and a side of burnt toast. Look, I'm not looking for anything serious. Okay. Just looking for a good time. That's all. Okay. I'll text you or something. CPS closes the door. Fuck. 3 a.m. on a Sunday, and I'm alone again. Then, one by one, he picks up each item of clothing and redresses himself. Slowly, he situates himself. The lights fade to a few minutes earlier. I'll text you or something. I know what people call me. Fuck boy. I'm not stupid. Somehow, sex has completely defined my adult life. And who I am, to most people, is that. Just sex. I lost my virginity when I was 15. It was in high school. Doing it just felt right. I felt like it was what I needed to complete myself. Made me feel new and sexy, made me feel wanted, made me feel happy. Sex is all I want and all I need to be happy. I don't know why I do it. Maybe it's because it's what I deserve. Maybe it's because it's what people want of me. They want me. That means something, right? I have no problem giving it all away. <laughs> so I fuck to be happy, to be needed. Is that so bad? 
I was raised right. I had parents who appreciated me. I had a happy childhood. They supported me and my choices. Yet, for some reason, life doesn't think I deserve love. And maybe that's true. Boys are messy. Love is messy. At least after sex, I can just wash myself off and be done with it. Can't do that with love. So I leave. I once stayed. I ended up staying for too long. And I was the one who got hurt. Let's go back two years. I'm sitting on my couch with my perfect man. We are He's taken to Fuckboy's apartment. He says to me, No, I'm telling you, this is a year. Dude, they haven't won a World Series since 93. It's never going to happen. Yeah, but the Red Sox, 04? Fuck, you can't bring up the Sox every single time. <laughs> Man, they got pitching depth and powerful offense. This is a year. You're a fucking goof, you know that? Why? Because I have faith in the Jays? No, because you're delusional. Don't be mean. I mean, I've had enough faith to choose you, right? Your only good choice this year, might I add. My best choice. I don't say this enough, but I think gay boys who know sports is sexy. Stop. You're giving me secondhand embarrassment. You're an ass. So I did it. Did what? I told them, my folks. Told them what? About being gay and uh, dating you, that stuff. Everything all right? Yeah, I just... I didn't think you were serious. Well, I, I mean, I am serious. When you're thinking about telling your mom. About us? Yeah, about us. I don't know, man. You don't know. I don't know if it's a good idea. Really? What? Last week, you were going on and on about how we should just do it. Rip off the Band-Aid. I know. I know. Um, I just didn't think you were going to do it without telling me first. Well, I did. So? I'm not ready. You for real? I'm not going to do it. Wow. I just... I don't even know what to say. I never asked for you to come out. But I did. But that's not on me. There's no going back for me, man. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't. You did it I didn't... for us to make our relationship stronger or to take the next step or something. Our relationship? Yeah, our damn relationship. We're barely in a relationship. You're just a friend I fuck around with. You're scared. That's what's going on here. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. Nobody taught me how to do this. 
navigate coming out and how to be with another man. I should go. Stay. I love you. I, I don't think I love you. And I don't want to waste your time anymore. You're not a waste of time. No, I just, I can't do this. And with that, I watched him leave. I guess it just wasn't in the books for us. And it left me all broken up inside. It's stupid being that broken up over a single person. It was like that feeling I used to get when I was a kid that I love him so much I can barely breathe feeling that whenever I think about him not being with me, I just want to lock myself away in a room and listen to Bad Romance by Lady Gaga on repeat feeling. That feeling of desperation, knowing that no matter what I did, I couldn't make him love me. After him, I buried my feelings in late night hookups and casual encounters. There was a random date every now and then, but nobody really stood out until I met cold pizza last year. I don't know. There was something about him. He was clever, charming, funny, and refreshingly cynical. He just had something about him that commanded my attention. And he was someone that I wanted to give it to. We had this amazing first date that ended in amazing sex. A yearish earlier, it's the night of Fuckboy and Cold Pizza Slice's blind date. Fuckboy is sitting on the couch tying his shoes. Cold Pizza Slice enters from the bedroom. I almost forgot your watch. Shit. Thanks, man. Maybe I should have kept it on my nightstand. Might have given you reason to come back. So you're saying you want me back? Fuck yeah. That was honestly some of the best sex I've had in a while. You'll be back. And if I don't? You will. Missed you better. You're really cocky. I know. I like it. I try. It's really nice meeting you. Yeah. I'll call you or something. Yeah. I really liked him. I did. After that, I wanted to put so much of my energy into, I wanted him to like me. But sadly, nothing really materialized with cold pizza, unless he wanted sex, which he did a lot, which honestly was kind of awesome. I have a high libido and it's sexy to find someone who can outdo me. But I hoped that eventually it would evolve into something more. That maybe he might show some more interest. But nope. After every time I sucked him off, radio silence. Doesn't feel too great. So about six months ago, I stopped trying. Then, a few nights ago, I was looking through my phone, going through every old fuck buddy and FWB, trying to find someone to help me get off, when I saw the contact info for my so-called perfect man. 
I knew I should have deleted it. But instead, I did something so incredibly stupid. I texted perfect man, just something so unbelievably mundane, like, hi. And of course, the fucker responded. We went from awkward small talk talk to lengthy texts about my life. Then in a lapse of judgment, I mentioned meeting for coffee. And that's what we did. So it's yesterday afternoon, and we meet up at a cafe. Hi. Hey. Thanks for coming. Of course. So the Jays never made it to the World Series. I told you they wouldn't. Yeah, you did. You can say it. I told you so. Well, you fucking know I'm always right. I, uh, I think I want to get back with you. It's just that we were having these amazing conversations over text and everything just seemed so good between us. Oh, wow. Near to a hundred. Uh, it's been like two years and I don't know, I, I think that maybe we could try being together again. What are you doing, man? I just really want to be back with you. I'm sorry. I'm seeing someone else. I'm happy with them. Okay. You deserve happiness. You do. But you're not going to find it with me. Perfect man stands up and leaves the cafe. I sat alone in that cafe for like an hour. Just fucking feeling sorry for myself. Sad, isn't it? I am just fucking tired of it. I really am tired of feeling sorry for myself. I just, life is like a balancing act with perfect man. Maybe I came off too strong. I didn't take his needs into consideration. Then with cold pizza, I was distant. I never told him what I wanted, that maybe I wanted to know him better, know him outside the bedroom. I was expecting him to be the one to take charge, to be my knight in rainbow armor, to save me from this life of singlehood and fuck boyery. I didn't let either of them be real people. It was always about how much they could do for me, how much they could give me, how much of their vulnerability they could let me have, all without me giving any of it back to them. And so I realized maybe it's too late to ever fix what happened with perfect man. But maybe I still had a chance to change for the better. To allow myself to exist as a person who makes mistakes and lets other people be people. So, late Friday night, hours after my meetup with Perfect Man, I scrolled through my contact list and I saw the name Cold Pizza Slice. This could be my chance to do right, to tell him I wanted to know him better, to apologize for never giving him a shot or never allowing him the chance to give me a shot. So I texted him. Hey, what's up, winky face? And then I fucking realized I put a semicolon instead of a colon. Who uses winky face?
Oh, not much. Just lying around naked. <laughs> so. Good. Just bored. Dot, dot, dot. Are you doing anything special tonight? Not really. Maybe just some um, Netflix and bed. Bed, winky face. Fuck, I did it again. I sound stupid. Why did I say bed? Yeah, I'm just lounging around, trying to relax. Okay, here's my chance. Maybe he'll invite me over. Then I can explain myself to him. Want company? We could relax together. Okay, he's not texting back. Hey. Hey. Hi. What's up? Hey. Radio silence. Once again. I just really wanted the chance to explain. You know, I keep on making the same mistake over and over again. I keep on rationalizing the same damn mistake. And that is me just waiting for other men to validate me. And then suddenly, last night, seemingly out of nowhere, I get a text message from the cold pizza guy asking me to come over. Light shift back to CPS's apartment. CPS enters from his bedroom as Fuckboy knocks on the door. Hi. Hey. Cold Pizza Slice reaches out his hand and uses it to guide Fuckboy into the apartment. CPS starts kissing him while taking off his jacket. Then CPS abruptly stops and asks. This is what you wanted, right? Yeah. They kiss passionately. Then Fuckboy ends up back in the hallway. I stand outside his apartment, wondering why I left. Fuck it! Hi. Hey. Do you want to start over? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I'm Bryson. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> Hi. Hey. This is really fucking corny. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Do you want to go get food or something? I'd like that. Blackout. 